I've been spotting this lamp everywhere. So to kick off 2024, I want to show you how to model, material, and light this bad boy. Okay, so let's get to it. I have imported the reference image, which can be found in the description below. And I'm now going to import the first shape. So we're gonna grab a cylinder. I'm going to set the vertices to 60 instead of 32. I'm gonna right click shade auto smooth. I'm gonna scale this all the way down so that the first two points, let me switch this off for now. The first two points are at the top of the lamp shade. I'm going to then come out of edit mode and add a subdivision surface. And then I'm going to go into wireframe, highlight all the bottom and press E to extrude. And I'm gonna scale you up. I'm gonna do it a couple more times. E to extrude, scale, E to extrude, scale. I'm just gonna get this as close as possible to the reference which is around here. This might take some adjusting, that's completely fine. Highlight what you need to do. I'm gonna highlight this section here and scale in. I'm gonna highlight this section here and scale it in. And I'm gonna up the viewport level to two. That's just gonna help me see the edges a bit better. All right, so once we've got to here, we can then uh, press E to extrude, and I'm gonna press on the Z. And then I'm going to grab that um, middle line here. In fact, actually, I'm going to press Control R and put another loop cut in. Press G and G and Z just to move that down. Oops. And I'm just going to keep scaling and readjusting until I get something close to that reference image. Don't feel too much pressure getting that spot on um, but it will be useful right let's highlight you scale you down i'm gonna highlight the bottom one and then i'm gonna put some loop cuts in by just pressing ctrl r chuck another loop cut in like that okay i'm pretty pleased with that if i move out then we've got this kind of cylinder look i can right click that and shade auto smooth and at the top, I'm going to go into wireframe, highlight all of this, and just go to the item section. And I'm going to set the mean crease to 1. And that's just going to um, completely flatten out that top half of the, the stand. Okay, so onwards to the next shape, which is the lamp shade itself. We're going to add another cylinder. And we're going to scale you down, making sure that the the amount of face on that was 60. I'm going to scale this to meet the edge of the lampshade, which is found on this corner here. And I'm going to press SZ and scale downwards. I'm going to wireframe to adjust this roughly for now. I'm going to then select all of these in edit mode, move that down. I'm pretty pleased with that. Maybe a little smaller and we'll move it down ever so slightly. Just a hangover. Pretty pleased with that. And then can move around, go back into edit mode, select the face select and delete the uh, lower face. So I press X to delete that face there. Now I'm going to apply the rotation scale by pressing Ctrl A, rotation and scale, and I'm going to add a bevel modifier. Because we deleted the lower face, it's only using the top half and this face here to adjust the corner of where we want the bevel, which is perfect. The only issue with that is we don't have as many curves to go around here. So we're going to set the segments to 30. It's quite a lot of segments, usually I use about 7 to 5. But because we want that real smooth curve of the lamp, we're going to apply 30. I can then adjust the amount um, in wireframe mode to see roughly how much I want. I'm holding shift to get a more finer um, increment increase and decrease. And I'm pretty pleased with that for now. Perfect. I can then need to go into back into solid view and we need a bit of thickness to this. So I'm gonna add a solidify modifier. I'm gonna hit control save and I'm going to add reduce the thickness of a 
and so slightly to potentially that. Apply rotation and scale again. And then I'm going to add another bob bevel modifier. So search bevel. I'm going to then set the segments to seven and I'm gonna reduce the amount just so we don't get that awkward like middle line. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Feel free to play around with it. I'm gonna select the top shade. I'm going to apply the bevel modifier and then on this top here in edit mode I'm going to select the top face and invert by pressing I just about this much and then we're going to press E to extrude and then I'm going to press S to scale and what that's done is built this like cupcake shape inside almost. I'm going to scale this down to something that's cool and then what I'm going to do is go back to face select, hold shift alt and then select the outer line here. And what that's then done is selected this inner face and also this outer like line here, which will then allow me to bevel this. So I'm gonna press Control B and up with the scroll wheel to uh, increase and decrease the amount, but something like this of high mesh looks pretty good. And I'm gonna then click, I'm happy with that. And come out of wireframe when we've got this indent here, which is pretty cool similar to this okay so now it's time to um, hire the lamp stem so I'm gonna click the lamp stem press tab go into edit mode and wireframe I'm gonna then highlight this top half here and press G and the Z I'm just gonna move up to where we made that index now we're gonna UV unwrap this um, so we can apply some materials to it so what we're gonna do is gonna select it one of the objects press tab press A UV smart unwrap and then click OK and do the same for the other uh, shape here. We can then save and we're going to build the basic perimeter of where this lamp is going to sit. So what we can do is press search, control A search and we're going to add a plane. I'm going to press 3 and bring this down to the lower part of the lamp, scale it on the Y axis scale on the x-axis and I'm going to select the edit mode and extrude this back line by pressing E and then Z. And this will give us a nice backdrop with control A rotation and scale and press control B. And get a nice amount of segments in there. Right click shade auto smooth back out of edit mode. Perfect. Okay we're going to set up a camera so we're going to press control A and we're going to add a going to press 0 to go into the camera and I'm going to press N view camera to viewport which is allow me to then fly within the camera and position a nice shot. I also want the camera in the camera settings to go to orthographic this gives me a nice like um, very I don't know it's just got a nice bit of character to it um, which kind of replicates uh, from the lamp I think it's, it would be a cool camera type I guess. I'm going to adjust this orthographic scale to get the lamp into shot. As we can see there, I'm pretty pleased with that kind of angle, looking cool, looking cool. I can then come out of the camera to viewport and that won't allow me to move the camera anymore. Perfect. I'm going to then set my render properties to cycles and set that to my GPU and I'm going to reduce the sample rate to only like 300 for now. I'm going to talk you guys through the way I've set up and what I think is best for this. Two area lights positioned from the top view and viewing from the top now. This one's slightly bigger and has the properties of 10 power and this one has the property of 10 as well and the difference is the spread on this is a little sharper so it's just over 100. You can see that they're positioned pretty low um, and yeah if you'd like this this actual project file it'll be available on my Gumroad which can be found in the description below that will come with everything set up and, and ready to get started. I'm also going to be using a HDRI and I have this set up I believe um, which I do which is called Photo Studio Loft Tool 4K and this can be found on Polyhaven which I will also link in the description below. I'm going to press Shift A and search for a path. This is then spawn in the path that I'll need to scale down. I'm going to then press Tab and press G 
and I'm going to look where the lamp corner starts. So I'm going to move this down, say something like that. This is all going to get moved so I don't be too careful about it. And I'm going to grab each of these vertices. And when I grab each of these vertices, I can create this path, which basically demonstrates the where the cable's going to go. So I need to yeah, so always cater to the um, camera viewport. So we can drag out another window, view this here. I'm going to come out of edit mode once I've got my path, and just change the bevel to around just to give it a bit of thickness. Okay, so I've been setting up the lighting and this is what I've gone for. Um, sorry, the materials. And feel free to pause the video here. This is for the material for the orange and the hex code for the orange I'm using is C94C0D. Um, if you'd like the exact orange for that. Um, but feel free to copy through these and get them set up. I'll also apply just a very simple principle BSDF, background color of a gray. Feel free to change these materials to whatever you like. And for the cable, I've just left it white for this tutorial here. There's one thing I need to add now, which is very important for the lamp itself, which is the underlighting. Before I get to that, I've also um, rotated the HDRI by 270 degrees. It just lets me the lighting looks slightly nicer on the lampshade and what I've now included if I go to my 3D viewport go into wireframe is two uh, point lights which can be found in light point and these have the properties of this so one watt and a hex code of FFE 0BA and a very low radius and it just lets that slight shine through and if I reduce the roughness you can see it does allow a nice little bounce to, to appear from there, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's view it in the render view, and I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that's come out really well. Um, if you'd like to actually add the lamps or the bulbs underneath, feel free to do so, but for my tutorial, I am not going to be doing that. Um, but yeah, perfect. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to wrap up with a few little statements on I'm back. I'm doing very short, quick tutorials. And the reason for it is I just love making videos, but I don't want to have some complex storyline or narrative of why I'm making the video. I just want to, if I see something cool and I want to model it or model it. Um, so yeah, feel free to subscribe. It's free and um, I'm really looking forward to the next video. And I'll go and catch you 